in our own. So today we're going to talk about this this secret that's been kept from the world. When the white man came amongst us the first time 6,000 years ago, he was kicked out. And then he shot coming back. But this time, he when he came back into Egypt, he took what was off the walls in Egypt. The true history for over 50,000 years. True prophecy based on 25,000 years of prehistory. In other words, we wrote history in advance and the Egyptians knew some of that history, prehistory, and the prophecies. But the white man came, who later became the Jews, we'll get into that later. The white man came and he condensed the Bible, he did this history, condensed this history into the Bible, which is condensed to fit 6,000 years of white folk existence. But prophecy is still in effect. In other words, they took the information, the prophecies, and the history, but they, they, they shrunk that history in the 6,000 years because that's the only time that white folks existed. So they had to sink everything with that and then them take the characters, just like those who be in bondage for 400 years, take that and put themselves in that as though that was they, and then God has chose them and took them out and gave them the promised land. They're over there now killing the, the Palestinians to take what they claim God gave them. But if that never happened, then God gave them nothing. But what he did was done in that time period was gave them a way of tricking up the black man and the black woman. So he takes this Bible now. He, he pulls us out of Africa and the black man and, and woman in America and he feeds us this condensed history, these prophecies, but now we're looking to him as being the chosen people and we as being the, the, the cursed seed of Ham. But then Donald Elijah Muhammad, the message of the black man, the histories that was given to him by Master Farad Muhammad, he re revealed the big secret to the brain of the black man and woman that could decipher this condensed version to pull out of it the truth of the prophecies and the histories. And from that, making the black man and woman, waking him up and giving him a knowledge of himself to break the code that got him locked into the Bible, now he can come out as gods. He said, what about the Holy Quran? Well, the Holy Quran, if you look at the Holy Quran, it was not built to reveal this big secret. Now, what, what is this big secret? The making of the white man. That's the big secret. The Holy Quran was not built. As a matter of fact, the Holy Quran was given through a white man for the resurrection again of the white man. The same way that Musa had to go and resurrect the white man uh, 4,000 years ago, he still fell again. And so into the uh, Dark Ages, and so here come the Quran to wake him up. It did not give you the histories within the 6,000 year frame, even though it talked about the same, some of the same histories, but it didn't give you a time frame. So it could be within that frame or it could be before that frame. In other words, uh, David, uh, uh, Solomon, all those figures could have existed, but not in this time frame, but in a time frame before that. And that, so that the Quran doesn't correct what you think, but it it bears witness to what is said, but you're thinking that it's locked within that time period, but the Holy Quran does not clear that up. Because to clear that up would not allow the, the Jews, the white people, to enslave us for 400 years. Then the secret would have been up. Well, hold, wait a minute, if they know that, the, the, uh, uh, that it's supposed to be the black man and woman who's being prophesied, then I'm not gonna take them and put them in, in bondage for 400 years for God to come, but no, they had tricked their own selves into thinking that they had in fact been the, the chosen of God and been in bondage for 400 years in Egypt and then um, God sent Musa and brought them out. They had fallen victim to their own lie. No, Musa came to the caves and hillsides of Europe and brought you out with the truth. But you had gone savage. You had lost the knowledge of yourself and the rest of the world had lost the knowledge of you how you were made and who you were. 
So you came out and now you have thinking you can beat the prophecies by keeping everybody asleep as the time frame of the 6,000 years is over and you can slide into being the God in the hereafter. But Master Farah Muhammad came, gave the honorable Elijah Muhammad the teaching and the message to the black man in America has awakened the black man so that now we can achieve and do what our destiny is. Now, they was pretty slick. You know, in the Bible, you know, they talk about, you know, uh, Noah and the ark. And out of that, uh, he had a son, Japheth, then Ham and Shem. And, but it said Japheth was the Gentiles. That was white. But it said the Isles of the Gentiles. So the Isles of the Gentiles, this area here between Greece and Turkey and Crete, this is the Isles of the Gentiles. But you think of white folks that's coming from over here. But no, the Bible said they came from here. And then we're taught that they came from here, the islands, where they were made at, came into to, to Egypt and into Mecca, were run out. Some were run into Crete. Some were pushed up behind the Caucasus Mountains. But they weren't made there. But they were pushed behind there. Once they came amongst us 6,000 years ago, we ran them out. Now, they've been trying to get back ever since. But the Isles of the Gentiles is a clue, a hint as to who and where they really came from. They really came from these islands where they were made out of black people. Now they coming back into us through Joseph. Well, in the Bible, Genesis 47, 20 and 23, we see that Joseph was n n not quite what we have taken him to be because Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Wait a minute. Why would somebody from the outside have to buy the land of Egypt for Pharaoh? If Pharaoh was the king, Pharaoh would own all the land already. For the Egyptians sold every man his field because of the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. Wait a minute. This is somebody from the outside. And as for the people, he removed them to the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt even to the other ends thereof. Now, isn't this familiar? He removed them to the cities? Well, this is what they did to us uh, uh, in America. When we came out of slavery, we were just buying up the South. But they came and they burned us and they lynched us. They ran us out and ran us into the cities. Only the land of the priests bought he not. For the priests had a portion assigned to them by Pharaoh and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore, they sold not their lands. In other words, somebody came into Egypt he bought out the priests, okay, the sellouts. We got the same problem right now in the black community. These, these damn Christian preachers, sellouts. The, the, the priests sold out to Pharaoh, became a part of the conspiracy against their own people. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. In other words, the Egyptians became the slaves to Pharaoh under Joseph. This is a whole different idea. And these and, and these were the in the Hyksos, who were called the shepherd kings. You know, Joseph and them was shepherds. And it was around 1782 BC to 1570 BC that they were over lower, a lower part of Egypt near Avaris in the Delta. They didn't make it all the way upstream. And what they was trying to do was find out the name of the God of the Messiah that eventually is going to free up the African people again. They couldn't get the information. Eventually they were kicked out by two brothers, Ah Moses and Ka Moses in 15, around 1570 BC. They were, they was kicked out. But that wasn't they weren't finished there. They came in amongst us again. And they were defeated at the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC by Ramses, who kills 10,000 Hittites. They were called Hittites at this time. Because again, the, the, Jewish, the Jewish people had not been formed yet. We will talk about that in a minute. How they were formed. Well, the you might remember Ramses is the, the Pharaoh that the 
scholars want to say were is the one that died in the sea on chasing Moses. But actually, it was Ramses who ran the Hittites into the river. Okay? He ran them into the river, killed 10,000 of them. He and his pet lion, he had lion, he scared them so bad he ran them into the river and they drowned. Okay? Now this was so hurtful that they, when they rewrote the book, the Bible, we'll get to it in a minute, they made him the enemy of the chosen people. The, the black man protecting his own land from the outsiders, he killed them so bad that they were hurt and later on go try to say that this man was, in, that, that was the one who died in the Red Sea when it was really their own king who died in a, a lake, or not a lake, but a river, blood, with the blood of those who were killed and running away from this black man right here. You see, the white folks don't forget. They will get you one way or another. Well, we don't forget. And we will get them one way or another. Well, this man, Ramses, here he is here in front of the Temple of Luxor, in front of an obelisk representing his power and authority. Now, the, the Romans and the Roman Catholic Church went and stole an obelisk, cleaned off that obelisk, and put the cross on top because now they, uh, so why did the Pope of Rome steal an obelisk from Egypt, erase all the hieroglyphs off of it, stick a cross on top of it, and then address it on Easter Sunday? So who has really been crucified? So they have crucified the black man, taken his power, stuck a cross on it, in the suffering and shame, and now come out and celebrate this. Every Easter, we got him now. We got the black man now. We are the God of the planet. And they expect they're going to stay there. But they're not. They're losing ground as we speak. Now, let's get into this book. You know about the Noah's Ark? Well, where is this Ark? You know, the, the, the white folks don't even claim that they know where it's at. They don't even... I mean, if this was the artifact that saved all man, would they have kept it? Well, you see, it lets you know that these are liars. This is not their history. It's something they have stolen. Because if they were the people of the ark, they would at least have replicas of, a, of it, and it would be very important. If not the original one, at least replicas. What about the Ark of the Covenant? Supposedly, that this is what Moses uh, uh, made for them um, and the house of God. Uh, there are many legends, no evidence. This legendary artifact is ornate, gilded, a case built some 3,000 years ago by the Israelites to house the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. This is the story they give, but they don't have it. They don't have this. Okay? Well, why don't they have it if they got it, if they, God was gave it to them? I don't understand. But the ancient Egyptians, every year, they had a festival, the Opet festival, where they carried around a boat, and in the boat was a box. And the box had these winged cherubims, like back over here, protecting the box. And you hear, you see these poles, like that right there. But see, this is what they did every year for thousands of years with this ark, this boat, and in it a box that kept the tabat or the tablet or the book. So these people have come and stolen our identity and they ain't going to try to claim that they got the ark and the ark, but they don't have the ark, no the ark. Come on now. But 
there are people, the Ethiopians, who believe that that they actually have the ark, and they have what's called the Tim Timket Festival in Ethiopia every year, parading the tabat of the ark, and in the the ark is the, is the tablets. This is what they do now, and look at these ornate uh, umbrellas. You see that as a part of the celebration. Look at this. Off our walls. This is pictures off our walls of this pro this 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 festival they have. And you see it. And, and look at this. This is the same thing, and they carry it around this box. So the kids' tradition is being carried on by the uh, Ethiopians, but not by the Jews. Hmm. Now, in every see this right here in every temple we had 42 of them in ancient Kibbet, Egypt they had this ark and that ark or that box in the ark the two arks the boat and the box in the holy of holies because that was important that was a center so there was a flood okay there was uh, an, uh, 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 an exodus but these happened maybe 50,000, 100,000 years ago. Maybe even a million years ago. Okay? But not 6,000 years ago. And we kept this as a reminder of that. And we did a festival um, of that every year. Carrying this thing around. To remind us of our being saved by God from the destruction and from the enslavement. But this is not enslavement of Israel by Egyptians but by the, the tribe of Shabazz by our own back in Arabia and we came across the Red Sea at um, Dejabuti coming from uh, Yemen into Africa now This is the Great Pyramid from above, and we have boat pits. You got five here and two here, and this is one of the boats, okay, that was excavated. And the boat was taken out and put together. The planks were put together. So it was so sacred for us that we had these boats, okay? that we saved because these were the boats that saved us so it was kept here as a part of the history being kept and protected and preserved for us to see today so here we were more concerned about the so-called ark the so-called Ark than were the so-called Jews because we are the original and they are the imposters. Now, there's a place in Cairo, Egypt called Fort Babylon. You go on a map and you will see this place called ba Babylon here in Cairo. And the pyramids are right across the street. Now, when I saw about this Fort Babylon, I had to go study it. What is Fort Babylon doing in Cairo? Well, when we were taken over by the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar, they built this fort the same way you do in any occupied land. So you take out the goods and, and have your army to protect it. You take the goods out the country. They took out the goods, the people, and the knowledge. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So, now let's look at this history here. This is the part of history. This is the, uh, some, some, in my book that I talk about, um, the, the sheep, sheep, dog, and evil shepherd. I talk about the chronology of the major events around this part that I call the stealing of our identity. Okay? Um, 
605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar reign begins. Okay, he defeats Necho, ne Necho, uh, which was an Egyptian uh, king, and Daniel was captured. Then in 597 BC, the Jerusalem was attacked by Nebuchadnezzar and his first deportation, supposedly. We're we'll going to talk about that in a minute. 586 BC, Jerusalem destroyed and second deportation. Now, neither one of these deportations, supposedly, that happened, there was no scripture. In other words, they didn't bring the book with them, the Torah, no ark. There was no ark of the covenant in Jerusalem at the time of Nebuchadnezzar taking over. So there was no scripture, there was no ark. Again, this is a telltale sign of a lie being perpetrated. Then in 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar enters Egypt and builds Fort Babylon. Now, I mean 568 BC, Nebuchadnezzar enters Egypt and builds Fort Babylon and, and has a massive African deportation. See, this is the real deportation that happened. This deportation didn't happen. Okay? This is all a lie to explain when they came back as they were deported, but they didn't came back. They were deported as Africans and they came back as Jews. We'll get to that in a minute. 556 BC, Nebuchadnezzar's reign ends and Bel Bel Belshazzar reigns or Neponidas reigns reign begin. In other words, this is the stuff you get from the histories trying to piece this thing together for you. Now, this whole thing about um, the Egyptians being enslaved by Nebuchadnezzar. The historians don't want to accept this. Some historians don't want to accept this because they're trying to hide. They want the, 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 the deportation and return to be talking about Jerusalem and the Jews. They don't want the, the reality that it was not Jerusalem that was important, but it was Egypt that was important and that they put a, a, a fort there to extract the Africans and the, the wealth of Egypt and the knowledge of Egypt. I got people right now who say, you know, Egypt ain't that important. You know, okay, yeah, right. You don't understand who you are, who the enemy is, and what is his intent. So you don't understand how come Egypt and our history is important. Okay, but look at what you know, the sovereign law thought it was important. Look what, look what Ezekiel 29, 8 and 12. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will bring a sword against you and kill both man and beast. Egypt will become a desolate wasteland. Then they will know that I am the Lord. I mean, they, the Lord really had it in for Egypt. Because you said, talking about Egypt, you said the Nile is mine, I made it. Well, you know what? In my book, the, uh, uh, I would not apologize. I can show you that, in fact, the Egyptians did make the Nile. The tribe of Shabazz, the Egyptians, we made the Nile. And so the God of the Bible was upset with us because we claim we made the Nile. Therefore, I am against you and against your streams, and I will make the land of Egypt a ruin and a desolate waste from Mig Mig Migdol to Aswan, and as for the borders of Cush, as far as the borders of Cush, the foot of neither man nor beast will pass through it, no one will live there for 40 years. So, if going on further, and in the 27th year, in the first month, on the first day, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, drove his army in a hard campaign against Tyre. Every head was rubbed bare, and every shoulder made raw. Yet he and his army got no reward from the campaign he led against Tyre. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am going to give Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will carry off its wealth. He will loot and plunder the lands as pay for his army. I have given him Egypt as a reward for his efforts because he and his army did it for me, declares the Sovereign Lord. Okay. You see, it was what was in Egypt that was important. He didn't pay Nebuchadnezzar with Jerusalem and the little trinkets, supposedly. There was no ark in Jerusalem. There was no book in Jerusalem. It was just an outpost of the Egyptians to keep them 
the Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians out that was overran before they were able to get into Egypt because what they really wanted was to get into Egypt to get its wealth. Okay? It was the, the Egypt was the reward to the sovereign Lord. Okay? The God of this 6,000 year period. So you understand the Lord, the sovereign Lord, the God of the Old Testament is Yahu. Okay? And so he was given permission to rule for 6,000 years. They didn't do the whole 6,000. Okay, 2,000, they were stuck up in the, in the caves eating, eating raw flesh and sleeping with dogs. But then Musa came and brought them out again for them to do their, do their dirty work. On, and it was hard. It was hard to break the, the empire, the civilization in ancient Kemet. And some people today say, well, if Kemet was so, how can the white man beat him? Because, you know, the white man kept going, man. Yeah, we were peaceful people. These people had a system, man. They had an intent. And it was a secret. We had forgotten who they were. And they were able to infiltrate and, and buy off the priests, etc. As I showed you with Joseph buying off the priesthood. And so they were able to sneak back in here. Then we kicked them out. Then they went from, from that to uh, producing half-breeds and brought those half-breeds against us again. Now, continuing the timeline. Uh, 539 BC Cyrus reign begins and first re quote unquote returnees to Jerusalem still there was no scripture mentioned no Torah, no Bible 530 BC Cyrus reigns ends, Daniel dies and Cambyses reign begins, Cambyses destroys all Egyptian temples except the Jewish temple at Elephantine okay, Cambyses reigns ends and Darius reign begins now Darius authorizes the building of a Jewish temple in Jerusalem according to the Bible but again there was no scripture he sent them back but they didn't have no scripture Darius in 518 BC Darius orders the codification of Egyptian laws that means he had ordered to be everything to be written that was on the walls of Egypt okay and put into books and then they codified and was completed it took 16 years and still the Jews didn't have a book until 598 BC where Ezra writes the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses and Judaism is born this is 458 BC okay it was born when they when they were given the Pentateuch they didn't have the book they didn't have the book because they had not compiled the book they compiled it rewrote it tricked it up and then it became uh, the, the, the Pentateuch and the followers of it became the, 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 the Jews but these were just half-breeds made from not the uh, uh, um, no uh, Jews but these were the Africans that were deported the men castrated after they built the towers of Babel, Babylon and all that and built the gardens they killed, castrated, killed the black man took the woman, produced half-breeds and then gave the half breeds this book, okay, and made them think that they were the Jews, when in fact they were being duped by Yakub. So now the the big secret is a white man is a made devil. That big secret is what's been hid from the world. Now he knows, we know that he's a made devil. And anybody who comes and tries to confuse that is an enemy to the black man and woman. And why I say that? This secret that the white man is a made man. He's a devil, taught to do devilish men, to rule over the original people. Master Farah Muhammad gave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that information, that secret, and that secret is what woke us up and gave us the desire to leave them, to separate and go for self. Malcolm X confused us into thinking that white folks could be changed. Wallace Muhammad confused us into thinking that the white man was not a made man, that Master Farah Muhammad was not 
God in person and that he just made this stuff up. But now we got through DNA research from the white man that the white man did not exist before 6,600 years ago. His blue eyes did not exist before 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. There were no blue eyed people around. There were no white people around. This now has been proved by the white man's own research on himself. So now we see the Muhammad Elijah Muhammad taught us is correct. And we see from the, 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 the walls of Kemet and from the geometry of what we left in Kemet, the bad witness to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So now we're not going to allow anybody to confuse us over who we are, who the enemy is, and what we have to do. And we're not going to be uh, reticent about doing our job and performing our mission of transforming ourselves and then America, our part of America first, then the rest of the world and the universe. We, our job is to clean up the world, clean up ourselves, us have a territory that we can show the world how it's done and then produce the products that Master Farad Muhammad is going to give us the way that he's given the brother in Africa and the way in, in Zimbabwe, it's on my Facebook page, and also the way the Chinese claims that they have been given information from the wheel. They claim that they've been given information, technology from the wheel, which has allowed them to leap over the white man. And Minister Farrakhan has taught us that Master Farad Muhammad even gave the white man in 1947, he gave them the baby planes to study so that he could at least come up to a level. So the white man was given something by Master Farad Muhammad. The Chinese man was given something by Master Farad Muhammad. Now the Zimbabwean brother is given something by Master Farad Muhammad. And we need to put ourselves in a position and a territory of our own so that when he gives us this new knowledge, technology, we'll be able to, to put it into practice, produce products from it and sell it to the rest of the world and take our position again as being the gods of the planet earth but first we must move in the dark we must move together even if we don't see the planes we must believe that they are there so that we can come together knowing that we got protection he only wants those who believe in the unseen who can believe because of their the knowledge will make them move because one day he's going to be gone and he expects us to continue what he has laid out when he's gone. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has proved himself. Now we have to prove ourselves. So let us get on our posts. Let us find our skills that we can build. Let us find each other. We have now the love that's being developed through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan. A black man calls for black people to come, and, it, and four times they come in the millions. 1995, 2005, 2000, uh, 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 1995, 2000, 2005, and 2010. So, when with Farrakhan, we feel that love, but then when we get amongst the enemy, that love dies out. But if we need to get closer to one another so we can live with one another to keep that love and light alive and do, then use the knowledge that we have learned in this world to be ready to accept the new knowledge, the new technology, so we can make this world a heaven on earth. Thank you very much for listening to me. Assalamu alaikum family.